on to what I think is my favourite chapter in this entire course because this one is about what you should be offering your Patreons. In the next chapter we're going to talk a bit more about how to make this easier and how to make it different from blog and YouTube content but in this video I'm going to give you loads of ideas for things that you can offer your Patreons that are really easy for you to do. I probably spend two or three hours per week on Patreon, a lot of that just replying to messages and replying to comments. I try to post something in Patreon every three or four days, sometimes more, it just depends what happens in my regular life. It's very much regular life led. I don't have a schedule, I don't think, oh, I've got to post something. It's just when something happens, I share it in Patreon. The thing that people signed up for when they joined your Patreon is to see stuff that other people don't get to see. Say, for example, my YouTube channel is about cruising. There's loads of other things in my life that aren't related to cruising that my audience actually still care about. Things, for example, I've been painting my bedroom, maybe I go out to dinner. People actually want to see those things because they joined your Patreon to get to know you better. So if you have any content that you want to make that doesn't really fit on your channel, doesn't really fit on your website, Put it in Patreon. You could even unlist it and share it in Patreon as a unlisted YouTube video. Sometimes I've done that. I've made a little video about my cat and people really love that stuff. They just like to see behind the scenes, a peek behind the curtain at what happens. Even something like this, I may share a picture with my Patreons of me setting up this, of behind the scenes of the things you can't see behind the cameras, any kind of hidden secrets. When it comes to behind the scenes content, you could just share photos of things, you could share videos. You can't directly put a video into Patreon, so you're gonna have to upload it to a YouTube channel and just share the unlisted link, but that's fairly easy to do. You could share audio. I do a podcast every single week and that's one of my favourite things to do with my Patreons. I think it's nice if you can to find a completely different format to offer. I've gone for a podcast because I don't offer any free podcasts on the internet and then when somebody hears about the Emma Cruz's podcast that is only Patreon. I think if you just show more videos, you just do more blog posts, it makes it difficult for people to see what's the difference between the free and the paid stuff. If you can go for a completely different format if you're a blogger and you want to make some videos, for example, it makes it very, very easy for people to see what they're getting. If you are a YouTuber, one thing that I found that my Patreons really like is early access to videos. And this works really well for me too, because if I have a video and I've scheduled it to go out tomorrow or in a couple of days, I will put it as unlisted, share the unlisted link with Patreon. And those people kind of act as a first test for me. I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but for me, I get quite nervous waiting for the first people to watch the video just in case I said something really embarrassing there's something awful in the background I don't know what I'm worried about but having patreons who've already seen it and given me feedback really really helps me sometimes they'll point out things to me that I can change they might say oh the audio goes really weird at this time you've got a strange transition and it really does feel like I have this focus group of people who are testing things and they love it because they get to know things before everybody else they also get to comment on the video before everybody else so as soon as you share the unlisted link, they can write their comments as normal. And then when everybody else comes, when it's been published, I often see comments that say, how come Marcus commented on this six hours ago? It wasn't live. And then he pops up and says, oh, I'm a Patreon. I've got early access and they love that. So it's good all round. You're already making the content. I've decided to do some Zoom calls with some of my Patreons, which has been a really good way to get to know those people. It's all very well doing live streams, making videos, but that's very much a one-way conversation. And to be able to have that two-way conversation with people, you just build up a relationship with them so much faster. I have kept my Zoom calls to a higher tier only because I don't want to get to a Zoom call with 50 people in it because I feel as though that would defeat the point because I wouldn't be able to talk to everybody. So I would definitely recommend trying to limit numbers if you're going to do a Zoom call, but it's by far the fastest and best way to get to know people. And then you recognize their names when they comment on something or you see them around the internet. You're like, ah, it's Mike from the Zoom call. I call my Zoom calls my Zoomies. If you wanna give them any kind of names, people seem to like that. They like to feel a part of something. So I have my Zoomies. 
If you do have the resources to do this, offering physical products can be a really good way to do it. I'm in the UK and I would say 80% at least of my audience are in the US or Australia. So physical products for me is a little bit more tricky. What I have done in the past is I have sent out Christmas cards. I sent out Christmas cards to all of my Patreons last Christmas. It took me absolutely ages. I made the cards myself. They had my cat Hudson on them and they loved getting those cards. People would share the pictures of the cards in my Facebook group, they would message me on Instagram, and then everybody else would be like, oh, how come that guy got a Christmas card? Well, he was a Patreon and occasionally I do stuff for my Patreons when I can. That was easy because, I mean, it was a little Christmas card. It still cost me about £100 in postage, so it wasn't a cheap thing to do, but I easily gained the extra Patreons to pay for that by doing that. I do know a lot of other people too who do t-shirts, who do mugs, stuff like that. It's either if you don't have an audience all the way across the world because it can get expensive. I have decided to do postcards. My channel is about cruising, so when I go on a cruise, I will send physical postcards to people, but I would recommend just keeping your physical products small if you can. If you do have a separate merchandise place that you use, I use Teespring, you can offer discounts for that. You can also offer discounts for things like your courses. Some of my higher tiers on Patreon that are more expensive than my cruise course get access to my cruise course. And people have liked that. They're not necessarily there for the course, but when they've got it for free, they'll give me some nice feedback and it's, it's good to have them in there. Most of the stuff that I do on Patreon is just as and when I feel like it. The only thing that I do on a schedule is I do once a week my podcast and that kind of just summarizes everything behind the scenes that's been happening. So when I was doing the Ultimate Content Warrior for Project 24, I would be in the podcast saying, oh, I wrote this this week, I made this video this week, I hope I get through to the next round. And then I had all of these people who saw what I was doing as a bigger picture outside of just these YouTube videos, which was really, really nice. And they really enjoyed it. They would be saying to me, is there anything we can do to help? Do you need us to do this and that? And it was just really nice. So in my podcast, I will talk about anything that's going on in my life, saying my brother has a new job or I'm moving. That's the type of thing I'll talk about in the podcast. I do sometimes have cruise related themes. If something's happened in the news that is annoying me, I might talk about that in a podcast because it feels like it's not as public as on the rest of the internet. I know technically it's still on the internet, but it very much feels like just having a little conversation. And I love the podcast. It probably takes me, I don't know, half an hour to an hour to make it, probably. But that's just because I talk for ages, so. I also do the once per month Zoom with my Zoomies. And other than that, I only share things when I feel like sharing things. If I'm looking in my YouTube and I see something really cool in the analytics, I'll sometimes share things like that just because people like it. Another idea for a Patreon perk that people like is having their names at the end of YouTube videos. I have tried this a couple of times and I found that of for obvious reasons, the engagement on my videos as soon as I say thank you to the Patreons is off a cliff. So I have avoided doing that. I might quickly scroll the names across the bottom because people do like seeing their name in YouTube videos. But it depends how many Patreons you have, to be honest, because it can get kind of... You don't want to be showing 20 seconds of just names at the end of your video. No one wants to watch that, apart from the people who are in it. Another big perk of Patreon that you really need to push is that Patreon is access to you. I find it so much easier to reply to all the messages that I get in Patreon versus Facebook or email. So I tend to tell my Patreons that if you want me, message me in Patreon and I will get back to you so much faster than anywhere else. People just like that. It's kind of knowing that their message is guaranteed to be read and replied to. For some people, that's enough. That's enough of a reason to give you $5. This might sound like a lot of work and don't think that you have to do all of these things because you absolutely don't. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about how you can do all of these things without giving yourself loads of extra work. So I'll see you over there in a second.